What's up guys, Zach here in Alu for you guys today. And I'm um, sorry if this video has like any like the audio's off or anything. Um I'm doing this straight off the webcam and um sometimes I do like a direct uh, cam upload and the sound sometimes off. So if it's off in this video, uh, I apologize. But this will be my Ring of Honor so, uh, best in the world internet pay per view review. This is my first uh, ROH Internet pay per view review on this channel since Glory by Honor 9. And that was nine months ago. Uh, the last Internet pay per view I actually reviewed was uh, Final Battle 2010, which is on my um, other account, American Dragon 1996. That, yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, Final Battle uh, was before TLC, and I didn't feel like uploading four videos in two days, so I was just doing too much. But uh, ROH t uh, today. Um, best in the world, very, very good pay-per-view, very, very enjoyable, um, it really, the main event really was just the best in the world. Now, if this review, like, goes by fast, it's because I really just want to get to the main event, because the main event is just, like, the main reason to watch the show, but let's just get to it. The first match I actually had was Coca Banna versus Tsamio Simpa, whatever the hell his name is. Um, it was, a, it was a good opener, it was, it was fun. It was fun to watch. Um, Simpa did get the win, though. Uh, it was kind of gay, though, because when um, he pinned him, Cabana's shoulder actually came up. I don't think the ref saw it, though, so he counted the three. And uh, I thought that was just very, very stupid. But um, Simpa, apparently the dude's undefeated. Uh, to tell you the truth, I really haven't been catching up on ROH lately. So apparently the dude's undefeated. So, yeah. Next match you had was Mike Bennett versus Jay Lethal. The return of Jay Lethal in ROH. This is his first appearance in six months. Uh, not six months, what the hell. Six years, I should say. And uh, this was a good match. This was a lot better than I actually thought it was going to be. To tell you the truth, because Mike Bennett, you know, he's not that great of a worker. Um, he's really good at cutting promos, but he's just not a great in-ring in worker, I should say. But uh, this was just a pretty good match overall. Uh, this is probably, yeah, actually, I wouldn't... Hmm. Uh, this could probably be his best match he's had. I'm still debating about his match with, um, was it O'Reilly or Cole? I think it was O'Reilly or, oh, I can't, I don't know. One of the two, whichever pony had at, uh, Champions was All-Stars. Either that match or this match was probably his best match he's had so far. Uh, that was cool too, because they had a Randy Savage chance there. And that was just very, very cool. But, uh, Jay Lethal did end up getting the win with the, uh, Flying elbow off the top rope, hit the one, two, three, and one against Mike Bennett. Uh, next, we have the uh, No Holds Barred Street Fight, Rhino versus Homicide. This is pretty good as well, too. Uh, this is pretty enjoyable. Um, Rhino ended up getting the win. Wait, did Rhino end up winning? Hold on, let me check real quick because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, sorry. No, no, Homicide got the win. Oh, I know. I remember what happened now. Homicide got the one with the roll up, and then uh, Rhino just went off and ended up hitting the gore through a table. Uh, and, uh, you know, Homicide had to get stretched out. No, well, not stretched out, just like helped out. It was a good match, like I said. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then Bassey pretty much interfered throughout most of the match. And, uh, you know, like I said, Rhino lost. Uh, Homicide got the run with the roll up, and then Rhino just scored the hell out of him through the table. And uh, by the way, my stream, um, I don't know if it was just GoFi Live or just my stream, but it cut off a lot during these matches. It's, it didn't really start cutting off towards like the tag titles. When we got to the tag title match, basically it didn't cut at all. But throughout most of the night, it just cut off most of the time. So uh, some matches like uh, this match, Homicide versus Rhino, I actually didn't see a lot of because it kept cutting off. But from what I saw, it was pretty good. But uh, Homicide got the one with the roll up. Next, you had was Steve Carino versus Michael Elgin. Very eager to this match just for one reason. Mr. Wrestling, Kevin Steen returned um, before the match started. Carino came out saying, Ladies and gentlemen, here's uh, Kevin Steen. Kevin Steen's in the crowd. And the dude, look, he's in great shape, man. He doesn't seem that fat like he used to seem, or he is. Well, it's hard to tell because he's kind of like, he wasn't in a suit. He just had like, you know, that nice button shirt on and everything. He looked nice clean shave and everything. He kind of looked like he did like back in 05, 06 ish, you know, he looked pretty good. No homo, like, you know, no homo. But he seemed to be in pretty good shape. He comes in, then they tell him to leave. And that uh, they said on the uh, commentary that 
Security took them all the way to 34th Street, so I was like, okay, whatever. But the overall match, it was nothing special. It was kind of boring, to tell you the truth. Michael Elgin got the win when he uh, powerbombed Carino, and then he powerbombed uh, Carino into the turnbuckle, and then he powerbombed again. He got the one, two, three. And then after the match, um, House of Truth started attacking on Carino, and then Jimmy Jacobs ran in the ring, and then they attacked on Jacobs. And then... um. Kevin Steen runs in, just it starts helping Carino, and he's attacking um, Elgin. And then um, after the match, uh, Carino's like, you know, can you guys just let him, you know, speak? Because, you know, all Kevin Steen wanted to do was just, you know, talk. And, uh, you know, Cornette's like, all right, Steen, whatever, you can talk. Uh, Steen gets to the mic and says that he's so happy that he's able to be in the middle of the ring again. And he just needs to say one thing. Fuck Ring of Honor. That's what Kevin Steen says and beats the shit out of Steve Carino. He gives him the package pile driver to Steve Carino and just goes off on everybody in his way. It was an epic moment, I'm telling you. Um, in a way, I saw that coming, but then again, in a way, I didn't. I was like, he's going to do something because he's just not going to say how he should come back or something like that. He straight up just said, fuck Ring of Honor and just went off on everybody. It was very, very cool. So it's most most definitely that Kevin Steen is coming back because you can't have an angle go on and just have him leave and not be shown again. That's That doesn't work. But he's probably going to have like an angle with uh, Steve Carino. Uh, I'm, like, I'm kind of happy he's still uh, a heel, but I'm happy. I'm not happy that he's a heel at the same time because it's like, what is he going to do with the heel now? Because he had that long uh, year-long feud with Generico. It's like, what else can he do as a heel? So um, I'm kind of disappointed because I actually want to see him as a face to tell you guys the truth. But whatever, Kevin Steen is back. That's pretty awesome. Uh, next, you have the ROH World TV Championship match. Uh, Christopher Daniels versus El Generico. Great, great match. Very, very fun to watch. Um, great back and forth action. El Generico dig it up, get the win, become the new uh, TV champion with the brain buster off the top rope. Uh, very, very sick match, like I said. Christopher Daniels, fuck you. All right, I, I hate Christopher Daniels. All right, no, I don't hate him because he's a sellout or anything. He's, I don't like him. The dude's like 40 and he's still working in independence. That's kind of sad to tell you the truth. I know he's in TNA and everything, and uh, actually, there's rumors about him leaving after this show because he's not booked for any other shows. So this might have been his last match in ROH. If it is, I'm happy because I don't like the guy. He is a good worker, but it's like I just don't like him. You know, it's one of those people that you just can't stand. And I can't stand it, and I'm, and I'm happy that he's no longer TV champion. But I'm not happy that Generico's TV champion at the same time, because what the hell is Generico going to do with the title? Like, seriously, I really don't see Generico doing anything with that title, to tell you guys the truth. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens, to say the least. But uh, Generico is your new TV champion. Uh, next, we have the ROH World Tag Team Championship 4-Way Elimination Match. Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team versus the Kings of Wrestling versus the Online Express versus... J. Mark Briscoe. Uh, this was a great match. This was uh, very, very fun. In my opinion, it did drag on too long, but it was it was a good match. Uh, the Briscoes were the first to get eliminated. I didn't see how they got eliminated because my stream went out, and right when my stream came on, they just counted the three count, and I didn't see how they got eliminated. So Briscoes got eliminated first, and they were just pissed off because uh, Briscoes wanted to become the seven-time ROH World Tag Team Champions here, but uh, they didn't. Uh, the next team to get eliminated was the All Night Express. After the referee got distracted by Sarah Del Rey and uh, Chris Hero hit a rolling elbow, whatever the fuck he calls it, and just knocks the shit out of right, Rhett Titus. I always call him Rhett Titus. It's Rhett Titus. And um, he threw him on the mat, and Claudio pinned him one, two, three. And then uh, Wrestling's Dreads tag team ended up retaining after, I think they, uh, they hit like a double Alabama slam, I think it was. It said it was a spine buster in commentary, but it looked more like an Alabama slam on uh, Claudio, I think it was. They got the 1, 2, 3, retain the tag team titles. I didn't like that ending at all. They had the Kings of Wrestling own them, and then just they threw Claudio on the ropes and they hit a double Alabama slam, and then it was over. Like I, I wasn't a fan of the finish, but nevertheless, it was a great tag team match. Then after the match, the Briscoes come out and just beat the shit out of the wrestling's greatest tag team, Benjamin Haas. They beat the shit out of it, and it was funny because... Hero and Claudio were sitting on the uh, turnbuckle, was like just chilling. They're watching it. They're like, "Yeah, keep going. Don't hit me, man. I didn't do anything. Keep going. Keep going." I thought it was hilarious. 
But then, uh, you know, the All Night Express end up running in and uh, getting the save. And, uh, you know, uh, Benjamin Haas, I get carried back to the back. And uh, it's just, it was just very, very cool. A great match with a great, great ending segment, too. And then we get to the match that everyone wants to see. ROH World Championship match. Eddie Edwards versus Davey Richards. Match of the year, by far. This was a phenomenal match. It was great. It it was like, I think I'm going to say it was around a 40-minute match. But the thing is, it was so easy to sit through and watch. It was amazing, guys. It was, it was just very, very good. Davey, that motherfucker has stiff-ass kicks. I thought he was going to kill Eddie Edwards with those kicks. Literally, no joke. Every five seconds, all here is... I'm like, damn, dude, you're going to kill the guy. And uh, he, I think Eddie uh, got kicked probably around 20 times during this match. Maybe even more than 20 times. It was He was just getting his ass kicked. But like I said, this is just great back and forth. Um, there was a spot where um, Eddie did like a moonsault onto Davey. But he uh, hit his, like, his leg right on the barricade. And it looked like that hurt like a bitch. It really did. No joke. He fucked his leg up there. And he was actually favoring it for a while. And then um, uh, Davey ended up um, injuring his leg when he went to kick Eddie Edwards. But Eddie, uh, Eddie moved. And he ended up knocking his leg right into the ring post. And it was just like, holy shit, this match is insane, guys. It's, this really was insane. It was just va great, great back and forth, guys. This great back and forth. Um... There was a spot where um, Eddie actually dove through a table on the Davey. Like, he jumped off the top rope and went right through the table, right where Davey was at. It was just great. Like I said, great back and forth action. Uh, they had a spot where Davey had um, Eddie in the ankle lock, and then Eddie reversed it and put Davey in the ankle lock, and then Davey reversed it again, and it was just, it was great. And honestly, people are complaining about the ending. I honestly love the ending. It was similar to... Uh, Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair WrestleMania 24, you had basically Eddie get his ass kicked the last minute or two minutes of the match. You just had Eddie, uh, not Eddie, Davey, he kicked Eddie like three times, just super kicks him, and then super kicks him one more time for a third time he's down, one, two, kicks out, um, and then he gets up, and then, you know, Davey, he says to him, you're my brother and I love you, man. Stiff kick to the face, one, two, three. Davy Richards is your new Ring of Honor World Champion. I'm kind of pissed about this because look at this. Like I'm happy for Davy, you know. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm happy for him. Congratulations, at, uh, Davy. But what all he did was make Eddie look like a transitional champion. Eddie had that title for three months. Three months, Eddie had that title, and then he loses it. I mean, honestly. You could have gave Davey the world title at Manhattan Mayhem 4 instead of Eddie. Because that's the only downfall of this match that had a win-lose situation to it. If Eddie won, then uh, it would have made Davey look weak. You know, he's going, he's having all these world title matches, but he keeps losing them. But if um, Eddie lost, um, which he did, you made him look like a transitional champion. So that was my only problem with this match. You just made Eddie look like a transitional champion. And then... uh. Uh, five, another five stars for this segment too. After David Richards, he started crying, man. And honestly, I love it when someone wins a title and they start crying because it shows that they have emotion for the championship and that it's actually been their dream to get that championship. I thought it was just very, very good. And he cut a great, great promo too after it. And um, you know, he says how he has no family, all he has is friends and the Ring of Honor, and that's all he has. And, you know, it's just very, very great after segment with Davey. And then, you know, at the end he goes, Grandma and Grandpa, because they're both dead. He goes, you know, um, basically did the Rocky thing. He says, Grandma and Grandpa, I did it. You know, like he finally accomplished his dream. But I'm running out of time here. I don't know if you can go over 15 minutes on a webcam thing, but whatever. I'm just going to stop it here. Go watch the replay on, just go order it on GoFi Live or go watch it on uh, WMR or something like that. Just a great, great show. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Epic, epic show, guys. I'm Zach, and I'm out. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.